Hey there, beautiful people. So uh, today what I want to do is I want to show you some basic ki kitchen chemistry that you can be doing at any time in your home. So what I have here is, I, I mean, I I've got some fun beakers and graduated cylinders set up for my little demonstration here, but you can do this with cups and measuring cups and bowls and anything kind of things you want to do. Uh, this is straight out of my kitchen pantry. We have some ShopRite, uh, distilled vinegar, white vinegar here. We have Arm & Hammer baking soda. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, over the course of the next couple of videos, is I'm going to set up some demonstrations for you, all involving only these two objects, vinegar and baking soda, because there is some amazing chemistry you can do with just these two products. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about physical versus chemical changes, because there's two major things that we, we're gonna look at here. Um, about physical versus chemical changes and how you, the average everyday person, can identify the difference between a physical and chemical change, which is actually a concept taught in elementary school, middle schools, high schools, colleges, and people still have problems with them. So let's tackle like the most common misconceptions with physical versus chemical changes. So uh, let me get this set up for you real fast. I've got my two beakers. Let's put a couple of scoops of baking soda in here because we're going to do things qualitatively, not quantitatively, meaning that we're going to look at uh, just kind of do like an overall what's going on qualitative versus quantitative where I would say, okay, let's pull out my balance here and actually measure out how many grams and how many milliliters we're going to be working with. I put two heaping spoonfuls of baking soda into my beakers and you can see them here in there, they're white powder, okay? Uh, so one of the things that we always want to look at is there's a variety of different chemical properties that every substance has. Now I want to show you my two graduated cylinders. You'll notice that both graduated cylinders are filled with 100 milliliters of a clear liquid. One of them is water and one of them is vinegar. Now, how do I tell the difference? Well, visually, there's no difference between the two of them. And in fact, vinegar is actually 97% water and only 3% vinegar, acetic acid, is what the acid is. So there's, they're chemically really similar too because it's mostly just a solution that's the vinegar. But there's one thing that separates water from vinegar and that's its smell. Now, whenever we're in the lab, we don't just shove our nose underneath the, the graduate cylinder because we don't know how noxious those odors might be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna waft. And a waft is super simple. Put the container out in front of your face. You can see it's in front of my face. And I'm just gonna blow the odors that are coming off of them. It's called wafting. I'm gonna push them towards my face. And I smell nothing with that graduate cylinder. And this one smells like salad dressing. So this one here is my vinegar, okay? Nice and simple. Like I said, notice that I didn't shove it directly under my nose. I wafted the odors towards me. So this is my vinegar. Now, here's the thing about baking soda and vinegar. Vinegar is an acid. So when it reacts with the vinegar, it's going to be, it's gonna have something very visible that we're gonna look for. Water, on the other hand, does not react with the, with the baking soda. It is not going to show any type of visible reaction. So that's the way we're gonna separate our physical versus chemical changes. Now, whenever we're doing experiment, you'll see me do this often, is we try to keep one thing constant and then change the other thing. So in this case, I'm keeping the baking soda and about the amounts of baking soda constant, and I'm gonna change the liquid that I'm gonna to add to my baking soda. So I'm gonna do my water first. So when I pour my water into my baking soda, you can see it here, I'm gonna give this a stir with my scupula spatula here. You'll notice that for the most part, it kinda just looks like water with baking soda in it. And that's really all it is. And as you see that I have excess baking soda in here, because as time goes on, that excess baking soda is drifting to the bottom, settling to the bottom of the beaker. And you can see, I can see that clear water on the top right there. So it's present right here. Now, what did that look like? That looked like me pouring water into something. Like there was nothing special that happened because that dissolving is a physical change. 
I can get the baking soda back out of this. I can separate the water from the baking soda. Now, even the dissolved water, which it almost completely dissolved, you can't quite see it on this camera, but it almost completely dissolved in the solution. I can separate it. How, you ask? Simple. Anyone who's ever made pasta knows the answer to this. You know how when you make pasta, and then when the pasta is done in the boiling water, you dump everything out into the sink, and you're left with an empty pot. And what do you see inside the empty pot? You see a white ring going all the way around it. That's the salt and starches and things like that that dissolved in the water, but when the boiling water disappeared, it left that residue behind. We can do the exact same here, and I'm not gonna do this in this video, but if I wanted to, I could boil off all the water that was here, and all the baking soda would be, that I started with would be left behind inside of this container. That is separation by a physical means. That's why it's a, a physical change, not a chemical change. Now, let's move that one off to the side. Now let's grab our vinegar. Now again, we're looking for physical versus chemical changes. So we are producing something new in a chemical change. And you can see it all over the place. And I didn't even dump in all my vinegar. Now, did you see something new created in that one besides a mess? Yeah, bubbles. Bubbles were being created when I mixed the two together. And you can't quite hear it on the video, but there's fizzing. Now I'm gonna dump in the rest of my vinegar. And now, notice that it looked white just like it did before, but there is a clear bubble layer that's being formed. All that baking soda is reacting with that vinegar. I'm gonna give it a small stir. Because I'm gonna continue to react it and you can see all that fizzing that's going on. That is a clear indication that something new has been created. Bubbles, anytime you produce a gas, you are making a chemical change. So that clearly was producing a chemical change and I'm just continuing to mix up all that vinegar and baking soda because it didn't all mix the first time around because it foamed up all over the place. So that baking soda and that vinegar is gonna to continue to react. That presence of bubbles indicates a chemical change. Now, here's the interesting part. Remember before what I said, I could boil all this off and be left with the baking soda behind? You can't do that here. So, the chemical reaction for when baking soda and vinegar reacts is this. Now you'll notice that on one side of my reaction, my product side, the products are carbon dioxide and water. So if I were to boil this off, I will lose all my water and I'll lose all the carbon dioxide. It's all bubbling all over the place. See it fizzing up right there. And see a bubble, bubble, fizz, fizz. So that is going away. And I'll be left with a salt that's left behind, the sodium acetate that's left behind from the reaction. That's the So I'll be left with the sodium from the sodium bicarbonate, which is what the baking soda is, and the acetate from my vinegar. So that's the major way you can tell a chemical versus physical reactions. Are there times when it's it's tough, yeah, it's really hard. For example, if I put food dye in water, it looks like a new substance, but in reality, I should be able to get separate those two things back into each other. So sometimes chemical and physical changes can look really, really similar, and sometimes you get a bubbly mess, and that shows you that a clear chemical change was there. So hopefully you liked my physical versus chemical changes uh, video. Come back for my next one, I'm gonna do some baking soda and vinegar, vinegar demonstrations, and I'm gonna show you a complex concept that we do in chemistry called stoichiometry. Thanks, and I'll see you soon, beautiful people.